Spoiler alert, I'm in Hong Kong and for my first video, I'm comparing the city's cheapest yum cha with its most expensive. 16 American dollars for a plate of tomatoes. Which one will come out on top? The answer will surprise you. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Wait for it, wait for it, we are almost there. Ah, check this out. I mean, this cityscape, this skyline, it needs no introduction. It's one of the most iconic ones in the world. Of course, I am back in Hong Kong. I'm so excited to be here. I've just arrived at Victoria Peak and I'm a little bit puffed because today I did something I've never done before which is actually hike to the top. I've taken the tram up before, I've taken the bus up before but I've never ever walked and oh my gosh it kicked my butt. But totally worth it because the views on the way were incredible. And I am staying true to my promise that I made last time I was here in Hong Kong. I promised you guys that I would be back and I would be doing a deep dive into the food of Hong Kong and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing on my channel over the next six or seven videos. But before we kick things off I wanted to show something to you guys. So when I was last in Australia, I was going through some of my Jajush's, my grandfather, he's on my Polish side, so I called him Jajush. Um, I was going through some of his old photos. So something to know about my Jajush is we have a lot in common, and to the extent that I feel like I'm continuing on his legacy, he loved to take videos. My entire childhood is chronicled thanks to Jajush. He loved to travel, explore, especially within Asia. He was an engineer and he came here a lot for work. He actually spent a lot of time here in Hong Kong. And I have uncovered some of the photos he took from Hong Kong back in I think the 70s, I have to confirm with mom. But basically, the spot that I'm standing right now is where he took this photo all of those years ago. And I mean, it's just incredible to see how the skyline has changed. It's uh, almost unrecognizable. I was just trying to spot some of these old buildings in the current skyline and either they're gone or they're hidden by the bigger buildings surrounding it. I can't help but wonder if one day my grandchildren will see this video and come back to this spot here and do this exact same thing, spotting the difference between skyline then and now. If you're watching this future grandchildren, hi from grandma. <laughs> So it's morning time, it's my first day here in Hong Kong. As far as I'm concerned, there's really only one option of what we should be eating right here, right now, and that is of course yum cha. So yum cha is a traditional dining experience that revolves around enjoying small bite-sized portions of various dishes and served with tea. And I thought since I'm gonna be here for a while, let's do more than one yum cha, let's mix it up. And let's actually compare and contrast Hong Kong's cheapest yum cha with its most expensive. And one thing's for sure, there's absolutely no way I'm hiking back down. So let's get on the iconic pig tram and head to our yum cha stop number one, one dim sum. It's famous for serving up tasty yet reasonably priced yum cha and if this queue is anything to go by, it's popular for a reason. Classic Hong Kong things, I mean in the time it's taken for me to get down from Victoria Peak, go to my hotel, get changed, get here, it is now pouring down with rain and I guess it's to be expected, Hong Kong weather is very unpredictable. And since yum cha is a very social thing, I've invited my friend Linny to join me. She's from Shantou, a city in Guangdong province and her passion for yum cha is unmatched. I think yum cha for me it means um, a time to connect with my family or like friends. Um, usually we would spend like you know the morning having yum cha, we catch up on each other's lives, we order a pot of tea and then some like dim sims to enjoy. Let me tell you the things that I usually get. Oh what, what's that? It's basically a deep fried glutinous um, pork dumpling. <laughs> These two, how can Your you favorite? not eat? Yes my favorite. <laughs> Chasu bao. I this love one this. or that one? Oh, what? Oh, what's this kind of chasu bao? It looks a bit different. So Ooh. rather than steam, it's baked and it has a glaze on over it. Let's so try it's that. It's something yeah. a bit different. Yeah. Still getting used to Hong Kong prices, but this would be quite on the cheaper side, right? Yes. I mean, we've got pork buns, twenty-four dollars Hong Kong dollars. The most expensive item on the menu is the prawn dumplings, and the cheapest item is the pan-fried water chestnut cake. We ordered them both. So we just give this to the to the waiter. Yes. And what do you usually say? Is there something you should say? You can give it to her. How do, what do I say? Mgoi? Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Mgoi. <laughs> Easier than I thought. And of course, we have a big pot of tea on our table. Yum cha literally means drink tea. So a yum cha experience is incomplete without it. Today, we've ordered puar or pone in Cantonese. Really good to get those uh, digestive enzymes working. And considering like the extensive menu that we are looking at today. We're, We're going to need a few pots. <laughs> Generally, when you pour tea, you don't pour over 70% because if you pour over 70%, it's actually telling people you want them to go. To go where? To leave. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what a message to send someone just have their tea overflowing. It's like, get out of my house. First dish to arrive on our table is Daliong. It's chong fun filled with crispy you tiao covered in soy sauce and served with some sesame and hoisin sauce on the side. It basically dip it. And our second one, 
has arrived here as well, which is, what is this? It's the water chestnut cake. Oh, so this, this is, is our cheap cheapest. one. <laughs> It's so jiggly. Usually I'd wait for the other dishes to arrive and we can get into it, but I don't know. I don't want that your tail getting all soggy. What do you think? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Ooh, another dish has arrived. I mean, yum cha is a quick eat, guys. These dishes come out in minutes. But anyway, back to our zaliong, AKA carbs on carbs, just how I like it. Oh, for good. It gives you two different textures, mm -hmm. crispy and soft. It kind of reminds me of um, a spring roll in reverse, because mm. usually with the spring roll, you've got the crispy on the outside, soft on the inside, but this one, it's soft on the outside and crispy on the inside and I really love that sesame sauce and a little bit of sweetness from that hoisin as well. So good. At 21 Hong Kong dollars or $2.70 USD, this is the cheapest item on the menu. Question is, how does it taste? Mmm, it's sweet. I don't know why I was expecting savory, but it's definitely nice and sweet. And it's also a little bit crispy inside as well from that chestnut. So generally there's three different um this type of cake that you can order at Yum Cha. There's the water chestnut, which is the sweet one. There's the radish cake, which is savory. And there's also a taro cake, which is savory as well. Now let's move on to the most expensive item on the menu, the hagao, the prawn dumplings at $5.10 USD. It's a Yum Cha classic and also Linny's favorite. What in your opinion makes a good hagao? I think the skin needs to be soft, but it shouldn't stick and break when you hold it. Yep, and so should it be thick or thin, the skin? It should be in between. Another question I have for you mm. is when, uh, often when I have like dim sum, my technique for picking up the dumpling, I'm sure it's probably really wrong. I'll like skewer it with one chopstick and then hold it with the other side. You break. <laughs> so today I'm doing my best to hold it the right way. But guys, it's so much harder this way. Just classic flavors that I've grown up eating. Prawn dumpling, it is so good. Such a chunky piece, look at it. Look at that chunky prawn. This is actually what I, for many, many years growing up, associated with dumpling. Like if I would th think of dumpling or what is a dumpling, it would be this, like a hagao that clear crystal skin because growing up I would eat mostly Cantonese style food because there's more I guess from the immigration from Cantonese regions to Australia it was a bit more so I was more familiar with Cantonese food and I still remember the first time it was only after actually moving to China that I had my first like wheat skin dumpling and I was a little bit confused like oh that's a bit different and then I still remember the first time pairing a dumpling with vinegar and vinegar was actually a flavor that took me a long time to develop um, a love of I love it now but for me, dumpling was always something eaten with soy sauce. And now it's like, my concept of a dumpling is always growing and growing. The more dumplings I eat, the more dumplings I discover. But yeah, like eating this uh, hagao right now, it's like the flavors of my childhood coming at me. Talking of yum cha classics, you can't go past the shiomai. So this is how I usually do it. I like skewer it in and then you're not gonna drop it. We actually asked the waitress her views on this controversial chopstick technique. She said it's acceptable. It's acceptable. Okay, then I continue to do this. I'm going. Actually, I think this might be my first time eating um siomai with a uh, chili sauce. Usually, I just dip it in soy sauce. So juicy. This one's filled with pork and shrimp. Very nice smoky chili oil, actually, and it's got a hit to it. Really good. I'm gonna go for a second one. <laughs> we have our last two dishes on our table here. So this one is the baked. Bowl. And this here is the fried glutinous pork dumpling. This is my first time having a chashaw bowl that looks like this. It's so glazed and it looks like it's going to be sweet. I mean, I do have to give points off. There's hardly any <laughs> meat in there. <laughs> Where's the, Where's the, the meat? <laughs> Although I think I was just unlucky. Linny's bun had a lot more pork inside. I prefer the sweeter baked um, chashaw bowl over the um, steamed ones actually. I think it has a very nice um, sweet and not on the outside. I think I prefer the steamed one. Uh, I, I, I think this is just a completely different dish in itself. Mm. Uh, firstly, it has a very bread-like consistency on the outside. It's very sweet, so it's like also very different from what I'm used to having in the chasha bowl. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's good, but I still prefer me my original. I'm gonna start to need that tea soon. Because our last dish of the day is a deep fried delight, a glutinous rice dumpling filled with pork. Oh my gosh, look at that. That looks so good and really crispy on the outside. So it's savory in the inside, the filling, mm -hmm. um, but there's a little sweet note mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. I feel like Cantonese food is really good at like pairing flavors together and textures together. The soft with the, the crispy, the sweet with the salty. Do you like this place? 
Mm -hmm. It's good for my wallet. <laughs> the final bill has come to 205 Hong Kong dollars and considering how much we ate, I think it's pretty reasonable because that's about 26 US dollars, 23 euros. 40 Australian dollars. It's been a few years now, but last time I was in Australia and I got yum cha with my parents, I was shocked by the prices. You go for three people yum cha and it's like way over a hundred dollars. Yes. Prices are crazy. crazy. So I'd say that this was a very reasonable priced yum cha experience. Mm. So we are officially on a roll with our Hong Kong food adventure. Stop one done and dusted. And I'm sure after seeing that there are gonna be some people watching that video that are gonna start to have some cravings for yum cha understandably so that was really really delicious but what if i told you you could enjoy some hong kong style yum cha in the comfort of your own home and it can be ready in less than two minutes well thanks to the sponsor of today's video amoy that is very very possible so amoy was established in 1908 so it's over 100 years old and as well as offering a huge range of sauces and condiments it also offers a range of microwavable dim sum it's sold in over 30 countries and it's 100 percent made right here in Hong Kong. So if you're watching this video and starting to get those yum cha cravings, why not pause the video, head to your local grocer, check out the freezer section, pop them in the microwave for only two minutes, and then replay this video with a steaming hot plate of shao mai or prawn dumplings or glutinous rice dumplings in front of you. Anyway, that's gonna be it for our first uh, yum cha stop for today. Join me tomorrow when we check out our second one. Hello, hello. It's not actually the next day. It's actually a week later because the restaurant I wanted to eat at for this expensive exclusive yum cha, you really need to book ahead. You need to make a reservation. Uh, I needed to book about a week ahead. So it's actually a yum cha restaurant within the Eaton Hotel. It looks... Hi! Hi! Super fast! Hello! Hi! So yeah, let's go get some expensive yum cha. The restaurant's called Yat Dong Hin, and as soon as you enter, you'll see Michelin stars on the walls. And of course, I've invited Linny back to share this experience with me. And oh my goodness, inside, it's so quiet and unhurried. Definitely a contrast to your typical bustling yum cha vibe. And as for the menu, it's definitely got a premium feel. This menu is amazing. I want to take it home and frame it. And it's got the prices to match. I mean, 298 Hong Kong dollars for a serving of barbecue pork. That's like 40 US dollars. You've been here before, right? Yes, I have. And uh, how is it? I love the food. It's like a very different, um, I guess, more premium yum cha place. Um, and one of my favorite dishes, apart from the lovely yum cha range, is the um, cherry tomatoes. The ch your favorite dish here is cherry tomatoes? Yes. It's, it's different, it's very refreshing. You should definitely try it. So I remember the other day we tried the cha cha bao. Mm -hmm. The, um, the one with nothing baked inside. One. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that one. But today, let's try the other one. So this variety is baked, and I mean, whoa, who knew there were so many different kinds of pork buns? The other thing we should get. Oh, yeah. That one. Yes. So this actually has a spring roll inside. inside. Yes. So the other time we had the yotel inside, mm. and I even was thinking this kind of reminds me of a spring roll inside mm. out. But here they've actually gone the extra mile and they've put the spring roll inside the chong yes. So where are these tomatoes that you love? It's that menu. It's the fancy menu. It's, a menu. it's the tomato. Oh here. Look at that. Wait, what? Yes. $128 for a plate it. of tomatoes. It's worth it. Chilled tomatoes marinated with preserved plum juice. Okay, well this will be the most expensive plate of tomatoes in my life. We said that this was gonna be expensive, expensive yum cha, exactly. so let's spend some money, I guess. What about barbecue pork? Mm -hmm. I really like barbecue pork. Yeah. So we'll get a plate of this uh, barbecue pork for, yeah, $300. Is it scaring you or? Yeah, yeah, I don't usually eat at this kind the of The first cultural places. shock. Yeah, this is <laughs> And since we're doing this, may as well go the whole way and check out the soup menu too. With the soup tea, um, you don't just drink a soup for the flavour, you also drink it for the health benefit. So over here, we also tell you the different health benefits of different soup. So they have a daily healthy soup here and every day of the week, they have a different healthy soup. Today's Thursday, so we've got a pork spare rib soup with carp, kudzu, which I've learned is a root vegetable, and small red rice bean at 17 US dollars a pop. First thing to arrive was my tea and check this out. Out. It's actually sparkling tea, white peach earl grey sparkling tea. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is already a very different yum cha experience. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers. Damn it. 
Very nice. Yeah, refreshing? Refreshing. Sparkling, slightly sweet, you can taste the tea. Mm. Peachy. Yum. And then came our soup, our healthy soup. Whoa. Let's see how it tastes. I like that it's preserving the natural taste. It doesn't, it tastes like there's a whole lot of added like spices or sauces in there, apart from like what has been stewing in there all day. The meat is very tender. This is pretty good. Very good start to a meal that's coming. We've already got some uh, dishes that have arrived on the table. We have our pork buns. We have our char siu here. That, what was your exact words that you used? Sexy. <laughs> it's a sexy looking char siu. Let's start with the pork buns first. I hope there's gonna be a bit more pork in this one. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, here we go. That looks really good. It's so weird because we've had two yum chars and both of these um, like pork buns are completely different to pork buns I've had before. Yeah. It, it's, this one is so delicious as well. It's like, it's got this really nice soft crackle on the outside, a soft crunch. It also tastes slightly fruity as well, that pork. Well, let's continue on with the pork topic and try some of that sexy char siu. Definitely very soft. I think it tastes, the outer is stronger. I don't think inside's that strong. I mean, good. But is it worth the 300 Hong Kong dollar price? I put a question mark. By this stage, our entire order had arrived on our table, including the much anticipated cherry tomatoes. 16 American dollars for a plate of tomatoes. So what makes this so special? Why have we ordered this? I think generally when you have yum cha, you have the steam, you have the like stir fry, you have the deep fried stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, it might be a bit greasy, so the tea to cut the grease, but the cherry tomato is also the same effect. So it's got plum juice in it? Yes, it's basically what they did was um, remove the skin for the cherry tomato and they soak it into a plum juice. So the inside is actually packed with flavors. Oh my God. That is an exquisite tomato. That is a really beautiful tomato. I've never had a tomato like this before. No. I told you you'll not be disappointed. So good. Sweet, sour, refreshing. Because it's bursting with juice, but that juice doesn't have any of like any bitterness. It's sweet, it's fruity, but you also have that tomato taste as well. It is really good. It breaks up the, the greasiness. Yes, exactly. Worth it. Worth I mean, it? 60, 16 American dollars well spent, in my opinion. Now that our palates are well and truly refreshed, let's go in with the spring roll chong fun that's also served with that same sesame and hoisin sauce combo. This was one of my favorite um, dishes we had the other day at Yum Cha and I love how it's so soft on the outside and crunchy on the inside. It's got a really great flavor. I wish that the Mm, the spring roll was a little bit crispier on the inside. Mm. I guess that's the bad thing about paying a lot more. I get super critical of everything and start feeling like I'm a judge on MasterChef or something. Anyway, let's see if these Yalong Bao deliver. Typically, it's not a dish I would see at Yum Cha, but apparently it's one of this restaurant's specialties. Soup is very nice, very umami. I'm not sure if the mic captures, but like, we were... We were slurping. <laughs> that's a very good Yalong Bao. I think it's one of the highlight dishes that I've had so far on our table. I'm gonna have another one straight away. It's really, really good. Another item that tickled our fancy on the menu was this. It's tofu with salted egg yolk. Mm, very, very silky soft on the inside. Oniony and crispy on the outside. Because like usually this type of soft tofu, it breaks when you try to roast or cook it, but this one holds its shape perfectly. Yeah. I think that's what I'm really appreciating about this restaurant is like the techniques used to make the food. You can tell it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time. Um, it's more, it's like an art form, the food here. And I, I do really appreciate it. But I have to say, as of right now, it's still neck and neck for me. Hmm? Really? I like this for what it is, but I also like the cheap one for what that is. Well, maybe this siomai will be the deciding factor. This one's filled with shrimp and you've got a juicy scallop on top too. So it's like siomai, but make it fancy. Exactly. And of course, we're going in with the chili sauce. Oh, game changer. Love the chili sauce with this. I mean, it's very tasty. Like really packed with seafoody flavor. You can definitely tell that it has a lot of ingredients inside. Yeah. Um, underneath the scallop, it's actually a lot of shrimp. You can tell it's got really quality ingredients inside. Yes. It does miss out a little bit of that nostalgic siomai flavor for me because it, do, it it's just a different flavor profile, mm. I think. I think maybe why I am still in my mind preferring maybe the cheaper yum cha is because that is yum cha to me. Like that is the flavor of yum cha. That's what, uh, you know, you have a craving for yum cha, you go to that cheap yum cha and your mm. craving is fulfilled. Whereas here, it's like a different flavor profile. It's like, you can tell a lot of care is put into the ingredients, how it's prepared. like. 
I think it takes a lot of technique to prepare these dishes. For me, it's just, it's not that nostalgic flavor that I'm used to. So as special as this experience has been for my taste buds and my wallet, the grand total was 1,191 Hong Kong dollars. That's 152 US dollars, by the way. I think what I've learned from this experience is in the future when it comes to yum cha, I'll probably continue to eat cheap. This has been such a cool experience. Thank you for coming along and joining me for this yum cha food adventure. And thank you guys so much for watching. This is gonna kick off my Hong Kong food adventure series. I have so much food and videos coming your way you have no idea um, so please don't forget to subscribe and like and comment and do all the things thank you so much Lenny for joining me and I will see you next week on my channel bye guys